Hi everybody, I hope you are all well. So it's time to find out the five books that I'm going to be reading next. And the way I picked them this time was I have 15 books um, left to read out of the ones I've already announced for this year. And I just picked them in the order that they were stacked in my study. So um, it was, so obviously I, I just randomly stacked them. <laughs> and uh, so this is actually gonna be a mixture of fiction and non-fiction, which I'm quite excited because I haven't read a non-fiction book in a while so here we go so these are the books that I'm reading next in the order I am reading them so first off it's The Ichabog by J.K. Rowling now this was a book which came out uh, I think it was about October November last year um, obviously for the build-up for Christmas because when Covid hit and the first lockdown happened uh, in March last year uh, J.K. Rowling decided to publish a chapter of a book every week so that children um, had something to look forward to for, you know, lockdown and everything. There was something for them to read, something for them to spend time with the family reading, etc. And that was the story of the Ichabog. Um, I never read it. I had my mind was occupied elsewhere with obviously what was going on with lockdown and everything. Um, so I never went near it. And I was like, OK, so now they're publishing it. And what is absolutely really, really beautiful is that it's full of illustrations by um, children who was reading the story. So, for example, there's one of them. They were reading the story week by week on the website and they were submitting um, artwork. Uh, they put in a competition and JK and the publishers hand chose artwork to go inside the published books so the children were part of the story as well which i think is absolutely wonderful thing to do um so i'm really excited to read this uh and i because i didn't read it i have no clue what it's about i have no clue what happens so i'm going into this completely and utterly blind so let's see what happens so that's the first one i'm going to be reading uh, then the other the fiction book, because the other three are non-fiction, is Sourdough uh, by Robin Sloan. Now this I bought because there is a YouTuber, um, booktuber, sorry should I say, called Ariel Bissett, who she was reading this um, in 2019 when, uh, was it in 2019? Or was it, it might be like late 2019, early 2020, I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, and she was talking about it and I found what she was saying about it so interesting. Um, that it's about uh, this woman called Lois and she lives above um, a, like a, a restaurant. And she finds out that the um, people who own the restaurant are actually leaving and being like deported um, because they... they they were illegal immigrants and they kind of ask her to take over the business in a way and um, she works with computers and she has this kind of life where it just doesn't work for her and now all of a sudden she's taking on this um, this bakery, this business and she learns to um, bake bread and then what meaning it gives to her life and I just love the way that Ariel was talking about it so much so that Ariel actually learned to bake whilst reading this book and there's a recipe for sourdough and such in here um thus it's called sourdough because Lois learns sourdough is her first thing that she learns and um I just loved that the way that Ariel was talking about it I was like oh I'm gonna have to check that out so I put it on my on my Amazon wish list and uh, it was purchased after my 2020 no books <laughs> purchases so yeah so I'm really looking forward to sourdough okay so they're the two fiction and then these are the three non-fiction so the third book out of the five is me and my shadows by Lorna Luft so Lorna Luft is uh the youngest daughter and, and the second child of Judy Garland and she wrote this book about her her mother and her life and such and it was a book that um, the I think it was 2000 or 2001 um, drama uh, about Judy Garland that was a big hit, won loads of awards and like the Emmy, the Emmys and such, um, that it was based on. 
this book um, being the basic. And so I was like, because I'd seen it, that drama loads of times. And then I started re-watching like dramas of real, you know, real life celebrities, especially like Natalie Wood. There's one about Natalie Wood that I've got on DVD that I really like. And I stumbled across the Judy Garland one on YouTube again around that time. And I was like, oh, God, I'd really quite like to read the book. I wonder if it's available, if it's still published. And it is. So it and on my Amazon list, wish list in my 2020 no books uh, purchase <laughs> year. And so I got it after that year was over. Um, and so, yeah, I'm quite looking forward to this. Oh, sorry, it was an ABC TV miniseries. I've just noticed it says on the front cover there. Um, so, yeah, I'm quite intrigued to read the book. Uh, I know I've read a couple of books about Judy Garland. Judy Garland is somebody in old Hollywood that I absolutely love. I think she, she was such an interesting woman. So to hear it from her daughter's perspective will be quite cool. And the last two are actually linked together. So I'm going to show these together. So the first one, so book four I'll be reading, is The Murders at White House Farm, Jeremy Bamba and the Killing of His Family by Caroline Lee. And In Search of Rainbows End by Colin Cathell. So um, White House Farm, in case you don't know, it was made into a drama, um, a couple, I think it's two years ago now, um, starring Freddie Fox. And that has actually come to Netflix now, if you weren't able to see it, or at least it's on Netflix here in the UK. I don't know about other territories. And it was about Jeremy Bamber. Now, Jeremy Bamber was uh, a man who was convicted of murdering his family, even though to this day he said he didn't do it when everybody knows that he did it. Um, but yeah, he's a really arrogant man, is Jeremy Bamber. And basically what happened was that he called the local police station. Sorry, there's a massive plane going over my house right now. <laughs> There we go, it's gone fine now. And um, he called his local police station, not 999, in, uh, it was 85 or 85, um, and said, look, I've had a phone call from my dad at our family farm saying that my sister Sheila has got a shotgun and she's going crazy. You need to get to my, my parents' house. So it was his parents, his sister Sheila, and Sheila's twin boys who were in, in the farm, in, in the house. Um, and due to, because of a misunderstanding and such, the police remained outside the farm as doing a standoff uh, with the gun wielder um, for about five hours, I think it was, um, until they stormed in and they realised that there was no there was nobody in the house and you know no gunman that having a standoff with so the people in the house all the five victims possibly although not certain could have gotten treatment to save their life if if that hadn't happened but it happened and um so sheila was found with the shotgun uh, and such. So Jeremy made everybody believe that Sheila had been the one, because of the the way he reported it and everything, that Sheila had gone crazy. Basically, she had mental health issues. She was known to have mental health issues. She killed her parents. She killed her twin boys, and then killed herself. Their evidence questioned that. And so this followed from completely third person perspective outside the situation of looking at the case examining the case and telling the story and it's a combination of these two books that the drama is based on and In Search of Rainbows End uh, is written by Colin Colin Caffell or Caffell I can't remember how you pronounce his name I apologize Colin if I got your name wrong and he was actually the father of the twin boys and Sheila's partner um they weren't married they they just they were together and had these two boys that he had been through with her her mental health issues uh and such and he lost his partner and his twin boys that day and he was he was kind of one of the first people to question what jeremy had said and so this is his book written completely from his perspective about what happened um and is a dedication to 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 prove that sheila even though yes she had mental health issues that does not mean that she murdered her family so and he points the finger at jeremy so yeah so i'm quite intrigued to read these two books i'll be reading 
this one first, uh, The Murders at White House Farm by Carol Ann Lee. And then the fifth book, my fifth book of the, the group turnout would be Inside White House Farm in Search of Rainbow's End by Colin Thumb. So there we go. So those are the five books I'm going to be reading in the order of Ichabod Sourdough, Me and My Shadows, The Murders of White House Farm and In Search of Rainbow's End. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to reading those and I will be back with my thoughts on the Ichabog as soon as I've finished reading. All right, guys. Bye.